were shot down over eastern Ukraine five years ago. All 298 people on board Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 killed when the flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur was hit by a missile. Investigators have blamed Russian-backed separatists, who they say targeted the plane with a Russian-made missile. And at a press conference happening right now in the Netherlands, investigators are expected to name four people suspected in the shooting Italian down of the plane. Let's take you live now to the town the of Nieuwegein in the Netherlands uh, in a moment to listen in. But on a further investigation I should the update you on before we do that is the website Bellingcat naming 12 Russian-backed Ukrainian rebels it believes were involved. But let's go to the Netherlands now and listen in. And afterwards, there will be an opportunity to ask questions of my JIT colleagues. I will now ask Mr Westerbacker to address you. Ladies and gentlemen, Based on the investigation of the joint investigation team, we have decided to prosecute four suspects for downing flight MH17. This is the start of the Dutch criminal proceedings. This airplane, Malaysia Airlines flight MH17, with its 298 passengers, ended up in an area almost five years ago in eastern Ukraine where an armed conflict was going on. That conflict is still going on today, turning an area of war into a crime scene. This made finding the perpetrators complicated. From the first moment on, we hear a lot of theories about the cause of the disaster as well as the question who are responsible. Often these theories are based on mistrust, on assumptions, and regularly even on deliberately presented untruths. This creates insecurity and unrest with the relatives of the victims. The Dutch Safety Board has taken the first important step in 2015 to provide them with clarity in times of insecurity. The board has investigated the cause of the crash and concluded that flight MH17 was shot from the eastern part of the Ukraine by a Buck missile from the 9M38 series. The investigation of the JIT also focused on, next to the question what exactly happened on the 17th of July 2014, the question who were responsible for that crime. Bringing justice to the victim of this crime has always been our driving force. We also want to provide the family of the victims with answers, but we can only disclose findings of the investigation that are legally and beyond doubt and can be substantiated and who do not frustrate the interest of the investigation. The starting point is that the courtroom is the venue where we have to present our case. We've always said that we have faith that we will achieve our goal. That goal was and is to find the truth and to criminally prosecute those responsible. Today, I can tell you that we've come to this stage where we can say that we are going to prosecute. It's four people who we held accountable as suspects for bringing in the deadly weapon, a Bakhtilar, into the eastern Ukraine. We will tell you in a minute who they are. First, I want to show you what in we found September earlier. In September 2016, the JIT announced that Flight MH17 had been shot down by a Buck missile from the 9M38 series. The missile had been fired from an agricultural field near Pervomaisky by a Bakhtila, which had been brought in from the Russian Federation. And after Flight MH17 had been shot down, that Bakhtila was brought back to the Russian Federation. At that time, the JIT was looking at about a hundred individuals who could in some way be associated with the transport of that Bakhtila and the shooting down of Flight MH17. 
Further investigation was needed to show whether they had played a criminal role. In May 2018, the JIT announced that the Bakhtila that shot down flight MH17 came from the 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces. We showed the unique combination of specific characteristics of this Bakhtila, based on which we were able to identify this Bakhtila. We also said that the group of about 100 individuals had decreased. The role of many of them had become a lot clearer to us. In the meantime, it had appeared that a large number of these persons were not criminally involved. Ladies and gentlemen, in the past five years we've been able to decrease the number of persons that we're investigating. Throughout the years, the investigation consisted of a forensic investigation, finding and interrogating witnesses and experts, the analysis of radar and satellite images, evaluating big quantities of uh, telecom data such as recorded uh, phone conversations, and also the analysis of big data. And the area of investigation in the eastern Ukraine is still inaccessible for the research team. This, of course, uh, leads to the fact that we haven't been able to accomplish certain investigative acts and that uh, some other investigation investigations take more time than usual. On the other hand, we've been able to acquire a lot of valuable uh, telecom data from the Ukraine, along with other sorts of uh, information in the past year. And as of this day, in the CHIT, more than 50 detectives and a team of about 25 staff members of the Public Prosecution um, uh, Bureau are working on the investigation. And part of the Australian and Dutch detectives are still permanently present on the field office in Kiev, where they work in close cooperation with the Ukrainian detectives, part of the investigation. Throughout the years, we've made multiple calls for witnesses, and these have uh, resulted in valuable information that is invaluable for the investigation. Because of this, we will round off this meeting with a new call for witnesses in order to uh, make sure that we go further, so that we make more proce progress in our investigation, because the investigation will continue. We realize that the witnesses in this case are sticking out their necks and run a potential risk. So, therefore, we take the safety of the witnesses very seriously. Beside witnesses and data from telecom sources, social media is also an important part of the research. We screen an more enormous amount of data on a daily basis. This we do with the help of advanced um, tools for analysis, uh, specially developed computer programs, and relevant information is analyzed and investigated. And in this way, we are still uh, gathering new data for investigation uh, because we will start prosecuting now, but the investigation will continue. Today, we will send out international arrest warrants for the first suspects that we will prosecute. They will also be placed on national and international um, wanted lists. And because of that, we will reveal their full names and we will show you their pictures. And the four persons are Igor Girkin, Sergei Dubinsky, Sergei Dubinsky, Oleg Pulatov, Oleg Pulatov and Leonid Karchenko. And Leonid Karchenko. Suspects Gherkin, Dubinsky and Pulatov have the Russian nationality and our information points to the fact that they currently reside in Russia. Suspect Garchenko has the Ukrainian nationality and we assume that he resides in eastern Ukraine. And this is an area that is currently not under supervision of the central authorities in Kiev. On the 17th of July 2014, all four suspects were in eastern Ukraine. They played an, a crucial part in the armed conflict and they had important positions, and the video will further explain. Shefalodovic Kierkin, also known as Jelkov or Pieve, born on the 17th of December 1970, 
is a former colonel of the FSB, the Russian Federal Security Service. Sergei Nikolaevich Dubinsky, also known as Khmuri, born on the 9th of August 1962, was employed by the GRU, the Russian Military Intelligence Service. Suspect Oleg Yuldashevich Pulatov, also known as Jurza, born on the 24th of July 1966, is a former soldier of the Spetsnaz GRU, the special forces of that military intelligence service. In the past, all were sent abroad as soldiers in the service of the Russian armed forces. Leonid Valodimirovich Khachenko, also known as Krot, is the only Ukrainian suspect. He was born on the 10th of January 1972 and has no military background. In July 2014, he led a combat unit in the Donetsk region as a commander.